If you watched my latest video, you would know that I made a Roblox game in just seven days. And well, that game sucked. But today I'm going to be challenging myself yet again, however this time I will have only one hour. Let's start the timer and get right to it. To start with, the idea of the game is very original. No inspiration drawn from a certain jelly bean game. Totally original. I'm basically going to just make a spleef game. It's a very simple concept, I want to see how far I can take it within an hour. Those of you who watch me make a game in a week, will be well aware that I have the scripting skills of a toddler. So we're just going to leave scripting until the end. That's probably a terrible idea. But getting on with the lobby, we're going to theme it like a soft play area for no particular reason. As I said, this entire game and concept is fully original. Stop the cow! So we're going to start by putting some assets together in Blender, like some bits we can use for walls, and also some soft decorative pieces that can add to the vibe of the lobby. Now we put them in Roblox to start assembling the map. I'm going to use a combination of these two cylindrical pieces I made to create the walls. I think this looks really good and does fit that kind of bouncy castle aesthetic. And I'm also going to leave one side open. It's kind of like a spectating point so you can watch people who are still in the game. And then I'm going to take the cubes and I'm just going to go and put them on the map. And I think it'd be cool to have them so you can kind of push them around so you can have a bit of fun in the lobby. And I think it looks great. And there's no bugs at all. This is this is just a feature. One very good thing about this style is it's actually really easy to create with only very simple shapes, but it still looks really good, which is perfect considering this game has to be done within one hour. And so with the lobby complete and looking great, it's time to do some scripting. No, I'm, I'm joking. You, you really think I'm going to do some scripting. So for the actual map where you're going to be able to play the game, I'm going to go extremely original. I'm going to make a tiled-like floor, and to do that, I need to decide what shape tiles I want. And we, we all hate hexagons, right? Who, who on earth likes hexagons? They're, they're probably the worst shape on this earth. So because hexagons suck, we're going to use a pentagon. We're going to model it in Blender, put it into Roblox, ah, uh, yeah, it, it didn't really tile. The only shape that really tiles are hexagons. But as I said, no one likes them. So we're just gonna use octagons and just have holes there. I'm going to go into Blender and make an octagon model, level it slightly to give it that soft look to match the rest of the game, and then put that octagon into Roblox Studio and then make a massive grid of it. These octagons are gonna disappear when you stand on them and it'll basically be a matter of last man standing. I've never seen anything remotely similar to this, so it's gonna be super cool and super unique. I duplicated these three layers of octagons so that when you fall from one layer, you can fall to the next. Then after the third one, you're going to die. I made it orange, neon, glowing, and put a lava decal on it. And this is kind of going to be like when you fall on it, you die on the lava. But honestly, I just didn't like how this looked. You're kind of just in the middle of the void, and you got this ugly lava thing in the middle. So I ended up just scrapping it and die in the void. But anyway, let's playtest the game and see how it looks so far. But anyway, let's playtest the game and see how it looks so far. It looks pretty good, and I'm really happy with the build style. That sets us back about 20 minutes, which isn't too bad, leaving me a good majority of this challenge left with the scripting. We're going to start by doing a round system. I used this tutorial from GamerMate, and considering I didn't have a clue how to make a round system before this, it made it super simple. In just under 10 minutes, I had a working round system, which spawned the players in the lobby to start with, and it leaves everyone in the lobby for 10 seconds, and then after that 10 seconds, it puts everyone into the game place. Space. And then anyone who is still alive after 60 seconds gets one win and then everyone gets put back to the lobby before starting the next game. I do want it to be last man standing instead of a timer. So hopefully we have some time at the end of the challenge to do that. But for now, this should work. With us being now at the halfway point of the challenge, I should probably get the game like actually working and I'm really going to need to pick up the pace if I'm going to complete this challenge which is why we're going to make the tiles now disappear. I tried to be all fancy and make one script that will basically work for any tagged part and I went and tagged every single part that I want to disappear with a breakable tag and I basically wanted to make a script that when a player collides with a part that has this breakable tag it will disappear but because I don't have a clue what I'm doing you can guess how that went. So I hope the next best thing. And so I made one simple script that will make every part disappear when you stand on it and put it into every single part. This is definitely not the best way to do it, but it will definitely work for now. Comment down below if you know a better way to do it. So next what I wanted to do was I wanted to set out a nice spawning area. The idea is to have a 16 player lobby. So I made 16 little spawn pads, put invisible parts around the edge so that you can't jump off, and then put a little part above every single one called spawn. However, one problem with this was the game just seemed to pick one of these parts named spawn and spawned everyone there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I added a number at the end of every spawn, going from 1 to 16. 
and then when choosing a spawn point it just does math.random 1 to 16 and this sort of works it doesn't stop two players spawning in the same one. However, more or less most of the time, you end up spawning in different ones to different people and it works for now. With this sorted, the last thing to do to have a functional game was to put a kill part right under the bottom of it. This took literally like a minute and with that, we have a semi-functioning game with an absolute ton of flaws I don't even want to get into. With that, we have just under 25 minutes left to complete this challenge. One thing I really wanted to do with this challenge that I didn't manage to do in my one week game was add data saving. But before we get onto data saving, I want to tell you how you can level up your development skills with Discover Design. Discover Design is a new YouTube channel I'm going to be running, providing great beginner and intermediate resources getting you started on your Roblox development journey. Not only will I be providing free educational content there, but on my new website, discoverdesign.shop, you are able to get game ready assets packs to use in your Roblox game. And a bonus for any of you who want to use the assets I've made in this video, they are all available for free in my Octagon asset pack. And for any other purchases you make on the site, use code OX10 for 10% off. But anyway, back to data saving. This game doesn't have much data to save. However, it has two leader stats, wins and cash. I followed a simple YouTube tutorial on how to add data saving to your game. And it, it, it wasn't simple. It was far from simple. And it literally took about 15 minutes which unfortunately only left me with a slither of time left for this challenge. And so to make use of this final 10 minutes or so, I just wanted to add some quality of life changes. One big one was the game felt really clunky when you actually walk on the tiles. They just kind of disappear and it's not very satisfying. So I wanted to add like a nice fade. So when you stand on it, it fades out and then disappears. This will also give the player some time to kind of jump onto the next tile. And so once I got it looking how I wanted it to, I remembered that I have to delete the script from every single one of these and then repaste the new one in. I'm not even joking when I say I was sat here sweating and grinding for like five minutes straight, deleting the scripts from every one. I went super fast and got it done in just around five minutes. Pasting the new one in was super easy. I just selected them all and did paste to selected. And with that, we've got five minutes at the end to make a game icon. I went into Photoshop and I made an icon for the game using this extremely original name, Octagon. Never heard anything similar before. I, I'm just yeah, you guys just, just uh, you don't have to let me know in the comments how great I am at coming up with names. And then with that, I took this logo, I put it onto an invisible part in studio, I put it above the game, and I thought it looked pretty nice. And with that, the game just needed some testing. And as you guys know, I have no friends to play my games with. So I just went and pinged you guys on my Discord server. It'll be linked in the description if you want to take part in videos like this in the future. And I want to thank everyone who came along to test this game. It was lots of fun, but also evidently very buggy. Despite that, the game turned out great. I got all the features I wanted in the game. I even managed to include stuff that I didn't manage to include in my one week game. There's still other stuff I can add as well if you guys want to see a part two. So drop your ideas down below in the comments if you want a part two and what you want to see in that part two. And click the video on screen now if you want to watch me make a Roblox game in one week. And hopefully I see you in the next video.